everyone. Good evening, good morning, wherever you're coming from. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Dr. Ryan of Mental Dental, and we're so glad to have all of you join us here tonight to uh, do a repeat. We talked with Dr. Leo before, uh, but this time the topic's going to be a little bit different, more focused on the barriers to becoming a dentist in the U.S. And so um, please write in the comments where you're watching from where you're viewing from, maybe what time of the day it is for you. I know sometimes we have people tuning in who are early morning, late night, we don't know. Uh, so we'd like to hear from all of you in the comments. So feel free to uh, interact with, with us as we're going here. I see uh, we have Rogerio here. Good evening, Dr. Ryan, Dr. Leo. Glad to be able to learn from two great dental professionals again. And we're great. We're glad to have you again. It's great to have you here. We oh, we have Algeria, 1:30 a.m. Wow. We have some Brazil, Brazil. Love to see that. Miami, fantastic. I passed my exams recently. Your videos helped a lot. From Canada, so glad to hear that. Idris, Algeria. We got two Algerias here. New York, Miami, Minnesota, Virginia. Fantastic. And by the way, guys, you may have noticed uh, I'm recording from a new location here. This is uh, the new Mental Dental recording studio. Uh, that's right. It's it's the first time I'm uh, live streaming from this location. So super excited to unveil it to you all tonight. Uh, there's a lot that went into this studio. Uh, there's a brand new camera. We have... Ooh, microphone. There we go. Streams back up here. And uh, of course, we have the YouTube plaque right here. Thanks to all of you subscribers. That was uh, at 100,000. We got that. And we have a couple little tooth things back here. Of course, we have to be on the theme of dentistry. So we have that as well. Um, so great. Um, I hope you, you guys enjoy it. Um, but let's, uh, without further ado, let's get Dr. Leo in here and we'll. Uh, give him a nice warm introduction. You've met him before uh, on the channel. We've we've done live streams before with him. And so uh, glad to have him back. Let's uh, bring him in here. Hey, Dr. Leo, how you doing, man? Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for having me here today. I'm doing great. How's it going? Good. It's going really, really well, man. We're glad to have you back. Um, and uh, there's, I know, some really good information that you have to share with everyone watching today. So I, uh, I, I kind of just want to get right to it. Um, but first, let me let me introduce Dr. Leo, because he's certainly Thank worthy of, of an introduction here. For those of you who uh, haven't met him before, Leo has uh, obtained his DDS degree from Virginia Commonwealth University. And he's been a dentist in the US for uh, over six years now. The funny thing about this whole story is Leo and I both live in Charlotte, North Carolina, but we didn't meet in Charlotte. We actually met each other because of our shared presence on social media and YouTube. And so he actually, before we ever met each other, he had been referring his students uh, to my channel from his course. And speaking of which, he has his own YouTube channel, Revoleta. Uh, Rivalita USA. Uh, I actually have a link to that in the description below this live stream. And he teaches uh, Brazilian dentists about how to become a dentist in the US. And now we're expanding that to just beyond Brazilian dentists, but dentists all over the world. And uh, so after we, we started talking about our kind of shared interests about uh, helping dental students and dentists around the world, we noticed specifically that there's a big need for foreign trained dentists to obtain quality, trusted information about the process. Uh, that we, and so we came up with a few live events for you guys. And, um, and now he designed this entire master class. Um, and, and this time it's in English. It's for people all over the world, not just those who speak Portuguese. So uh, he'll talk to you a lot more about that in uh, the coming minutes that we have together. Um, but without further ado, Dr. Leo, the show is yours, my friend. 
Thank you so much. It's always great to be here because uh, we're not even here for five minutes and there's like a, a, already there are a ton of comments coming up here. I cannot even keep up with it because there's so many people sending comments and questions and all that. That's 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 really exciting because at the end of the day, um, I was doing a, a course with a North Adonis. He's a Brazilian, but he teaches in Jacksonville. Uh, last week and he was like it's really exciting when we come to talk about things and for so many people mm -hmm. come and then so many people engage with us that's that's really like really really meaningful to what we do uh and and it's a pleasure to be here today dr i appreciate the the the, the opportunity to be in your channel again yeah. uh, we spoke before and today yes i have quite quite interesting things that i think can help everybody yeah fan fantastic and it's definitely uh something not only that we're excited to do to help uh, all of you watching, but this is also just something that we're both passionate about. Um, we like teaching, we like sharing information with, with you. And so uh, hopefully that's evident to you as you're watching. Um, we're just excited to be here uh, as well, for sure. So, wow, look at all this. Look at, you're, you're right. I'm just looking down at the comments here. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah, some it's really nice hard ones. to keep up with all that, yeah, because there's so many people commenting. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Veronica, so thank you. You, cha you changed the life of so many foreign dentists, mine included. We're together in this journey. Gustavo, yeah, I love, love these uh, encouraging comments. That's awesome. Keep them coming. That's amazing. Um, I think you have access to the, the presentation, right, on your end by any chance? Um, currently, I don't see it. Um, I just see uh, us two uh, on the screen, but uh, we actually, Dr. Leo has a uh, presentation this time uh, Let's prepared. See if it's, that uh, gonna come up now. I think it stays idle. It uh, it it comes off. Let's see again if we can get this going here. One second. Um, is it coming now? Is it showing now? Yep. I see. There. I see something down there. Perfect. I don't see the uh, slides yet, but I do see the the second screen for the. And don't worry, everyone. We'll get it on your screen very shortly. Yeah. Is it coming up now, or still not? Yes, now now I'm seeing it. All right. Here there we go. go. Uh, so um, today we're going to talk about the challenges to become a dentist in the United States. And let me tell you, there are plenty of challenges, guys, plenty of challenges. It is not an easy journey. Um, it's very time consuming. And uh, I think mentally is the hardest part of this whole process. And I select the different uh, challenges that people have. But before we start, not everybody knows who I am here. If you're from Brazil, you've probably heard about me. But if you're not, um, I'm a doc Dr. Ryan Wright made the introduction about my, my school background. So I'm going to skip this part. Uh, but before I became a dentist, I actually did quite a bit of research. Uh, if you're an orthodontist and you read a lot of papers, you might have read one of my papers. I have over 20 papers published, uh, quite a few of them in the American Journal of Orthodontics, um, the Angle Orthodontist and uh, some um, orthodont um, oral surgery journals as well. This is my first ever paper published when I was in Chapel Hill, where Dr. Ryan oh, is my very first paper ever. Um, that it's it's been a minute. It's been about uh, more than ten years now. This is uh, my most uh, important paper ever because this won the award of best research of the year by the American Journal of Orthodontics. That mm -hmm. was back in 2012 or 13. And um, I had to read that one for my uh, ABO prep. Sorry to jump in there, oh, Dr. Is it Leo. In the ABO? Yes. No. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And, um, absolutely. Due to the, the papers that I published, one day I got this email in German and I'm like, I cannot understand anything. And it was actually somebody from Germany asking me for an interview for their uh, for their magazine. So I had to write stuff in English. They translated to German. I was published over there in Germany. 
You can find things about me on PubMed, either uh, L. Kirish, my last name, or L. K. De Paula. Technically, my true last name from Brazil is De Paula. Uh, or on ResearchGate, you can find some of my publications. I also have three book chapters that I published along the way. They're right here, two in English, uh, one in Portuguese, all of them in the CBCT um, topic. I did quite a few things about that uh, in the past. Here's... Um, my chapter in CBCT in my Portuguese book. And I own two offices in the United States. My wife and I, we have two offices. Here's uh, one of my orthodontic offices. We've been there for five years, and that's my son coming up right there, sitting, posing for a picture. And uh, <laughs> I have two orthodontics offices here in Charlotte. But let's go to, to the important part of the day here. Seven, seven challenges. My goal is to talk to you guys about seven challenges that you're going to have throughout your path to become a dentist in the United States and how we're going to be able to help you. Let's do it. Challenge number yeah. one, find information about how to get a license. I'll tell you, there's so many people out there telling stuff that doesn't make any sense. And if you don't know any better, whoever can speak really nice, put a nice shirt, tie, and a nice suit on and go on YouTube, you might believe that person. But that person might not be doing the right thing. I'll tell you from my experience, because I deal with a lot of Brazilian friends that I have. I'm always in touch with them, getting the, the, the new information. And, and there are some Brazilian folks that do the same thing that I do. And surprisingly, some of the folks that are trying to provide information about how to become a dentist in the United States, they didn't do the process themselves. They just go and tell mm. you what to do, but they were not capable of doing the process themselves. You know, so unfortunately, you get a lot of information. It's like, kind of like Dr. Ryan is going to talk about the dental boards. And he took the dental boards five times and he failed five times. But he's going to come up with a course about this is what you got to do to pass the boards. But he didn't pass himself. Would you believe a person like that? No. But he did the whole thing. He passed and then he teaches stuff. So sometimes, many times, there's a lot of people out there that don't know what they're talking about. But they are preaching and some people are listening to them. And some people get disappointed at the end. So it's really, really hard to find good information, unfortunately. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very, very uh, clear about things. I don't know everything. I don't know every detail. I don't know every single possible way. But I can tell you that I know a lot. And I basically just recommend what I'm fully confident that people can really achieve. You know? There are people saying, oh, you can become a dentist doing X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yes, I've, I've heard about a friend of a friend of a friend who's done it. Am I going to recommend that pathway to you? No, I'm not. You know, So I'm going to bring right. you what is, let's say, pretty much guaranteed that you can make this happen for your life. So it's really challenging for you to find the right information. And part of this challenge is because there is one rule for each state of course many states have a similar rule but what makes the united states becoming a dentist in the united states so complicated is because you just cannot go to one website and find all the information that's extremely challenging so you, if you're in north carolina here and you want to move to florida guess what the rules are different the rules are different so mm -hmm. one pathway is to North Carolina, another one to Florida. So that makes things very, very complicated. Okay. Uh, for that, the way that we can help you is just going to our YouTube channel. Dr. Ryan posted the uh, Revalida USA. I have a YouTube channel. I don't have that many videos in English. I'm translating my Portuguese videos into English right now. So I have about 10 videos, I guess, or nine videos right there. I can't see really well. I have over 100 in Portuguese. <laughs> if you speak Portuguese, you're, you're going to be doing pretty well there. But I have about only 10 videos in English. It's growing slowly. I'm adding videos weekly. You're going to learn. I, I can promise you it's going to be good stuff that you're going to learn there. You know, you're just going to have to wait because they're coming very, very slow because I have a lot of work to do. And uh, they go on a weekly basis. Sometimes I have to skip a week or two because I'm too busy with my office. I have two offices. But yes, uh, I, th that, that's for free. You have this content for free. 
part of it, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, you're going to have to study for the boards. Mental Dental is right there for you too. So you have a lot of free, good content for you to enjoy and help in uh, mm -hmm. your path. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would go ahead and highly, highly, highly recommend you to watch this free video later. Five ways to become a dentist in the United States. It's, it's, it's one of my top videos. I have a ton of views in that video. I don't even know how many. Uh, it's showing there, I think, somewhere, but I can't see. Oh, 24,000 views in that video. That's, that's my main video where I talk about the five most common pathways for you to become a dentist here in the United States. So I invite everybody to go and, and, and watch that later, okay? Free, free, no charge. Just go there and uh, spend some time there. And the importance of learning that is because some folks like Dr. Tormena, he's the one that was doing the live last week with us. He has a very interesting story. He was living in um, Massachusetts. And I posted one day because a lot of people follow, follow me on, on Instagram. A lot of people live around me uh, and they're dentists, but they don't have the license to work in the United States. So I posted about a year and a half ago that I was looking for a dental assistant. And he texted me. He was like, hey, I live in Massachusetts, but I want to travel. I want to go work with you because I think, uh, I think I can learn a lot from you. And we're talking about Dr. Tormena is a highly, highly successful dentist. He, he is like a professor, had courses and all that. And uh, when he came to talk to me, I was like, hold on a sec. I, I think you're – let's see how I can help you here. And then after understanding his situation, I was like, no, you, you shouldn't come to work for me. Here's what you should do. You should apply to orthodontic residences. And in the meantime, he had such a strong, such a strong background in academia, and he loved to teach. And I was like, you should apply for faculty positions as well. And he applied and he got accepted to teach in Jacksonville, Florida. So today he teaches in Jacksonville, Florida. For Dr. Tormena, there were five ways to become a dentist. But out of these five, there was one that was the best option for him that suited his, his needs. And that was becoming a faculty. The option number two was to do a specialty. Luckily, option number one worked for him. And today he's a faculty in Jacksonville, Florida. So the second challenge that you're going to have after the difficult to find the information, when you find the information, there are other things that will come, that will ha happen. Your competition is strong. Your competition is very, mm -hmm. very, very strong. When I got my acceptance letter, that was whew, 2014. Uh, my competition wasn't strong as it is today. Internet, Facebook groups, Telegram groups, uh, YouTube channels like my own, that provides a ton of free information for people that want to go after and learn, okay? There was no Dr. Ryan sharing his knowledge 10 years ago. Today, you go to his YouTube channel, you got a ton of information for free. Me, back in the day, books, book, 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 book. This, the cards that I don't even recommend anymore, way better to just get the boot camp. Um, like so much stuff that I had to study because there was no quality content online. You're two years short, my friend. Two years short? <laughs> Ch yeah, <laughs> it's close, yeah. but you're right. Right? 10 years ago, the websites were not well developed. So let me tell you something. You're looking for information about a certain school. Chances are you're not going to find much. And when you find something that was really, really outdated. Mm -hmm. I remember getting so excited, but so excited about checking a school out. And I see that the tuition is only $50,000 a year. And I'm like, great, that's my number one school right there. I'm going to have to apply for this school here and find out later that the tuition actually is $90,000. They just didn't update their website. Mm. So today the schools are well, like way more aware of updating their information. So if you go to the school website, probably the, uh, the, the information is going to be up there within the last two years. And chances are maybe every year. OK, I still highly recommend everybody to get in touch with the school to find the, 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 the final answer. But, you know, the, back 10 years ago, you couldn't find it that easily. You know, mm -hmm. Facebook, WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups and so on. This kind of things are non-existent. People used to access student doctor network. But let me tell you. It was a lot of people trying to put a lot of people down. It seemed that like Student Doctor Network, some people would come with this amazing background that yeah. made everybody else feel bad. 
that it seemed that to me that was the goal back then. Today, things are not like that anymore. And I'll tell you, I use the student doctor network quite a bit. I did like back then for several things like keep keep up with interviews and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, and, and Grant, I'm saying about the international dental part itself, not because they have a lot of other stuff. But uh, but I felt that like because it was extremely anonymous, the post, you know, if you post something on Facebook and Instagram, you, you're, you're showing your face there many times, you know. But that was basically anonymous. And people are like, yeah, I basically, I mean, I have a Nobel Prize and I'm applying to dental school. I'm like, eh, you know, that's probably not true. But yeah. but people like yourselves who are trying to go through the process, if you see stuff like that, you got you get very, very, very discouraged. And that makes you like not want to pursue the path. So uh, the challenges that you had 10 years ago, you don't have this challenge today. People know that this is possible. People know that they can make this happen. People just don't know exactly how necessarily. But once they decide to spend a ton of time, like I did, researching all the schools and all that, they'll figure it out because the access to information today is much better. You know, so that allows your competition to become much, much, much stronger. So when I applied... And, and, and Dr. Ryan knows about this. The dental school in general, Dr. Ryan, is really, really competitive, right? If you go through the American path, like college and all that. Very competitive. Absolutely. It, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's very competitive. When you come to international, it's similar, except that only people graduated from different countries are applying. So people are aware of this competition and people are preparing themselves. Just in Brazil, there are two main folks who do courses like that. And there's some other people trying on the side. And we're only talking about Brazil. I have over 130 people in my course today. Of course, not everybody is applying, but I have over 130 people in my course. So you, you will be competing with them. I have six, uh, six people that apply this cycle so far. I think five, four got accepted. Two are waiting for the, the interview. And uh, that, that's, you know, that, that's great. That's great. But they are able to learn all, everything that I, all of my experience and other folks experience. And they basically are in a situation of a uh, big advantage because they know the ins and outs, you know. Today, like I said, mm-hmm. only, only in Brazil, over 300 people are signed up for courses. I have over 130 people in my course. I have done over 70 individual consultations in the last couple of years. I think it's been actually over 100. This year alone, it's been over 60. I have two coming up tomorrow, uh, Friday. And uh, since I started, I've done probably more than 100. Um, okay. Oh, here's a number. Only 70, 70, only in 2023. I thought it was 60, 70. And uh, foreign trained dentists, let me tell you, they, they are investing in their future. And uh, there are people making a business out of this. What I'm saying people is like, there are people helping to prepare your personal statement. He, people help you to prepare for the test. People help you to prepare to interviews. People help. So there are companies, there are companies. I'm pretty sure this already existed for the regular dental students that go through the college in the U.S. process. But now this became a niche. There's so many foreign trained people trying to apply that they have this niche of like, I'm going to train you for the interview. I'm going to train you how to write a personal statement. I'm going to train you how to uh, fill out your past, your capital application. So there are people making a full time business. I do this for fun. This is my fun time. I get to meet a lot of people. I got some people to move to Charlotte and have some Brazilian barbecue with me here. I got one buddy who lives down the street who moved to Brazil because he met me in my course. So I have a great time doing this. But my full full job, my real job, I do orthodontics every day. That's what I do. This is my fun time. I do in the evenings. I do record a video here and there. But but to tell you how busy this this niche is, there are people making this a full time. That's their main job. I'm going to help foreign trained dentists how to become a dentist in the United States, okay? So here are the things that you need to become a dentist in the United States. And these six things here, there are two different colors, yellow and red. The difference is that the yellow color, it has to come from you. It's a must. If you don't have the yellow ones in you, there's nothing that I can do to help you. There's nothing that Dr. Ryan can do to help you. There's nothing that anybody can do to help you. 
you have to have this two in yellow. You have to, you have to work hard, and you have to have commitment. Now, where people like like I can come and join, Dr. Ryan can come and join, uh, and join and, and and help you is with strategy guidance, our experience and our knowledge. I have a ton of knowledge in the whole process. Dr. Ryan has a ton of knowledge about the exams, you know? So we can bring a strategy, we can bring you guidance, experience, knowledge, but you have to bring the hard work and the commitment to make this happen. Otherwise, you will not mm-hmm. succeed. And I may say here, I don't think it's it's, it's anything incorrect, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say here that Plenty of people who get accepted into dental programs, they're not the strongest candidates. But they are the ones who stick to the plan. This is not running a, a, a 100 meter dash dash run using both. You, rain, you run 100 meters, you're done, you get your gold medal. It doesn't work like that. This is a marathon. You can't sprint in the beginning of the race because you're going to get tired. You're not going to finish this. You got to go for the whole 42K, the whole 42K. And for that, my friend, you need commitment, long-term commitment. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to bring your success. Okay. Hard work and commitment is nothing without knowledge and strategy. Somebody said that. It wasn't me. I don't know who the person was, but I copied this from somebody else. I don't remember. I'm so sorry probably some famous author, but I saw it somewhere. I'm like, yes, that, that's absolutely <laughs> true, you know? And um, I, I always remember about Dr. Velasky. Dr. Velasky, she she joined me before I even started my course. Dr. Velasky started before. I didn't have my course. I had my blog where I posted about stuff and she met me through my blog and she's an orthodontist from Brazil and she's like, I want to do this. I want to become a dentist in the United States. And she did. She got accepted to Boston University, and she graduated, I think, two years ago. Now she's doing ortho residency at UConn, and she's about to graduate, I think, next year. She's an example of hard work and commitment. She had two jobs in Brazil, and she studied for the board. She studied a lot for the boards, and then she studied for the TOEFL, for the TOEFL exam. She took the TOEFL seven times. Seven. Wow. I want to do seven until she got the score that she wanted to. That's commitment right there. That's commitment. Mm -hmm. Very successful dentist. Dr. Ryan, you might have seen uh, back in the day, early early 2000s, that was the best paper of the year. The the American Journal does the best clinical paper and the best research paper. I won the award for the best research paper. The best clinical paper, she won that award about 2008 or 2009. And oh, awesome. uh, she, she published that paper. She and another uh, orthodontist from Brazil, which is uh, which yeah. was really nice. That's that, great. Yes, that is commitment. That's somebody that's already successful where she is, but she got out of her comfort zone and she made it happen. And now she's living happily in in Connecticut until she finished her school and, and might might move somewhere else. And that's her right there. She's um, right there at the BU when she graduated. <laughs> Great, great friend that um, uh, social media and this brought to me. <laughs> number three, challenge number three here is to understand about financing and learn about how to pay back. That's a tough one. That's a tough one because culturally, culturally speaking, Americans and Brazilians are very, very different when it comes to finances. And I, I was, uh, I would say that probably the rest of the world's the same thing. Very different than Americans and. In my mind, and, and Dr. Ryan, I'm going to ask his opinion about the American uh, mindset about finance in, in a second. But in my mind, that was something that I would never want to have. Never, never want to have that. I want to pay for my school in full. But how am I going to pay in full? So I'm going to ask you, Dr. Ryan, how many people do you know, Dr. Ryan, that graduated college and dental school and ortho school and have zero debt? Um, I'll tell you this. I know the exact uh, percentage. What is the Z- exact- zero. <laughs> zero? None of us. <laughs> None of us. None of us. So here's the thing, guys. All of you foreign trained dentists, debt is part of the American culture. Okay. I'm not going to come here to say that you should 
take your student loans and, 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 and go on a Caribbean cruise or spend a month in Europe during your vacation. You shouldn't be doing that. But that is part of your life in the United States, especially if you want to go to something such as dental school, medical school, vet school, or something like that. Okay. And it was extremely hard for me to understand this mindset that I need to get this debt to go to school. And what I wanted to do in the beginning was like, I'm going to work and get money and I'm going to pay for the school. And let me tell you, buddy, every, every year that kind of thing called inflation. I mean, it, it, it raises the price of milk, but it really, really raises, raises the tuition cost. Mm-hmm. Just to give you an example, when I took my when I did school at VCU, my tuition was somewhere I think between the eighty to ninety thousand. Three years after was about one hundred and ten. Okay, so if I waited three years to take my course, whew, I'd have to work a lot harder. I'm so glad that I got accepted when I did because that saved me a lot of time. So many many people don't know what what are the options if they don't have a green card. Well, there are options. You were certainly a lot more limited, but there are options. On the other hand, a ton of people get a green card. If you have a green card, I'm, you're, you're like, you're, you're halfway there. If you have a green card and you're not working on your application, you are wasting your time. And I can also help you to understand the American debt culture, you know, uh, I talk about this in my course, the one that I have in Portuguese, to talk about that. Uh, basically, everybody has a debt here to go through school. That's normal. That's absolutely normal. My wife graduated in 2008, I think, from dental school. She's still paying her student loans. She's still paying it. Just to give you a simulation here, I brought up, if you take $200,000 as a loan from the school and you pay over 25 years at a 7% interest rate, which is quite high, but let's say 7% interest rate because the interest rates are high right now. You're paying $1,400 a month. That's it. $1,413 a month. That's it. Okay. You don't have to pay your debt in two years. You don't have to pay in three years. You don't have to pay in five years. Most of people will finish paying their debt in 10, but you have 25 years to pay your debt. Oh, but two hundred thousand dollars. I'm gonna take more money. I'm not that two hundred thousand. Not gonna be enough. Well, three hundred thousand dollars simulation here. You're paying two thousand dollars a month, just over two thousand dollars a month. Okay. Now, oh, three hundred thousand not enough. Let's let's go for the next one here. Four hundred thousand dollars debt. You're paying twenty eight hundred dollars a month over twenty five years. I would say that. Any dentist that works regular job, not, I'm not talking about somebody that works a day a week, half a day a week, but if you work four to five days a week and you don't make enough to pay $2,800 in debt, don't even come to the United States. That's what I would say. I mean, I have, you know, you just, I don't know if you just don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that would be possible. I don't know how that would be possible, but if even somebody that only does fillings and cleanings, which by the way, hygienists do cleanings here, but let's say that only you only want to do fillings and cleanings. That's all you want to do. Roots killing and planting. If that's the only thing that you want to do, you're still going to make enough to pay your debt. Okay. So if you understand the ins and outs of how the debt works, how you can pay for this debt and how it's going to be your income as a dentist, and you have a green card and you're not going through school because you're afraid of the debt. You're just wasting your time. One of my good friends now, um, he graduated from Tufts. He got accepted into Tufts. And he, I, I didn't know him back then. And he said, you know what? I'm not going to start a school right now. I'm just not ready. He was a U.S. citizen himself, but uh, he lived his whole life abroad. He did dental school overseas. And uh, he didn't want to do the dental school at that moment. And then I met him. I didn't know about any of his background. I met him. And then I started talking to him. And he was like, yeah, let me ask about this. I'm afraid about the debt and blah, 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 blah. I was like, well, 
start asking him questions and I found out he was a citizen of the US and I'm like you're a citizen you can get the loans you know because when he was talking about the debt I'm like he doesn't have a way to get the loans hmm. and then he was like no I'm a citizen I can get the student loans and I was like why are you not doing it well I don't know if I can just I don't know if I can pay this money back and I'm like man you're just I explained to him the whole dynamics and all that and he spent a whole year where he didn't start school because he was afraid of the debt. He didn't know dentists that could tell him, hey, this is how this really works. You can pay this back. It's going to be fine. You have 25 years. He had no clue about the loan system or the debt system. Then he applied again. He got accepted. He got accepted to uh, Tufts and he graduated. And today he works in uh, Massachusetts. He is really happy there. And he probably regrets he didn't go into the first chance that he had, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that that can be can be painful i'm so sorry if people are are uh asking questions it's really 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 hard to see and keep up with it i'm just gonna answer one really quick uh this is a uh, yeah. great reality check he has been mentioned the amount of the loan is scary i agree with you a hundred percent it is very scary but in your experience is it payable within five years or less uh the short answer is yes OK, the long answer is, is it worth it? That's the long answer, because if you try to pay your student loans really, really quick, that means that you're taking money away from your future retirement plan. OK, and many, many times I, re I refinance my student loans at a very low interest rate. So I pay 3.5 percent interest rate on my loans. And if I put my money in a safe account, a savings account, here I got 5% money back. So it's instead of paying my loan, I just put my money in the savings and I just let it grow there. So it doesn't make sense for me to pay my loans. Okay. I'm going to pay my loans over 10 to 11 years. That's going to be how my, my, my timeline. So uh, if, you, if you get a reasonable amount of loans, I'm not saying if you got $600,000, you know, that's a, a different ballgame. But if you get like two to $400,000 and you work, you work, you're not somebody who just came to the US, now I want to work two days a week. Yeah, it doesn't work like that if you want to pay your student loans in five years. But but if you have a commitment and you work, yes, it is payable within five years for the vast majority of people. Okay. Um, so challenge number four. Challenge number three was uh, the finance challenge number four is to understand the sequence of events. Let me tell you, but there is just so much stuff for you to do to, to get this American degree that is, it's really overwhelming. You start reading about stuff. You saw ECE. Then you saw ADA. What, what, what is ECE? What is ADA? Oh, it gets worse. Don't worry. It gets worse. ADA. What is ADA? What is INDBE? What is CAPID? I think it froze for a second, the, the screen that's coming up. What is INDB? What is CAPID? It's it's probably going to be coming soon. The internet probably slowed down. It, it may cut us off here. Oh, it came up. It came up. What is all that kind of stuff? You know, people just have no clue. And how many people sign up for a consultation with me? And they're like, I know everything. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. They start telling me stuff like this. This dude is clueless. They have no idea what they're walking into. They have no clue what they're walking into. So you have to learn about all these things, okay? And this is very, very, very complex to understand how these things connect to each other. The logistics of the application in the United States are very, very, very hard. And I'm going to use my own country, Brazil, as an example. You go, you take an exam, you either get accepted or you don't. It's one exam. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. You apply for that exam. You take that exam and that's it. Here you got to start with the ECE. Get the, no, actually get the dent pin. Go for the ECE. Sign up for the board. Then send your uh, information through the cap that belongs to the ADEA. And then you see the A that exam. You start to worry if you'd have to take that or not. And then you want to apply to schools. You're not sure if you can apply to that certain school in California because apparently they take a lot of people, but you don't see anything about code accreditation in that school. So you start to wonder, well, should I go there or not? It sounds like a great deal. And then you learn about the regional board. Should I take the regional board before I apply to school or after? 
And how does that affect the state board in the international na in, in, uh, integrated national board dental exam? How does all that come together? I'll tell you, but you're going to spend a lot of time figuring that out. Luckily, I can help you with that. I have this whole thing streamlined. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I have the supplemental here in the in the end because this, oh, there's more stuff. There's the AADSA. Even people, more. It doesn't have anything to do with your application, but some people get lost because they don't know how it works. I get people coming to me as a, as a yeah. foreign trained dentist. I got to take the DAT, Dr. Ryan. Dr. Ryan has to take the DAT. Foreign trained dentists, as a rule of thumb, have nothing to do with the DAT mm -hmm. because it's it's a different pathway, right? Dr. Ryan did the AADSAS, ADSAS, that's how they call it, right? Right. International dentists, they don't do that. It's a different pathway. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you get confused and then you waste your money. Oh, and there's the past few for the grad programs. It gets a little bit worse. <laughs> so this whole thing is very, very complicated. And I can help you that with that. This is a true story. This is Johnny. Johnny's not his real name, but I'm going to call him Johnny. This is Johnny. Johnny talked to me, but my course was too expensive for Johnny. He didn't want to sign up for my course. Johnny decided to do everything on his own, which is fine. Plenty of people can do it. Johnny applied to seven schools. Johnny did not submit his supplemental application because Johnny did not know that schools require a supplemental application. So he submitted his CAPIT applications through the centralized system and he did not submit his supplemental application. So the schools just disregarded his application. To mm. submit your application to seven schools, you have to pay a lot of money. He threw a lot of money down the drain and lost a whole application cycle. Not to every single school, but some of them, he just lost a whole cycle because my course was too expensive. My course back then was $700. Today, my full course is $1,250. Back then was $700. Johnny didn't want to invest $700. Just by making a mistake on his application, he threw down the window over $1,000. Mm -hmm. This is a true story, guys. He's saying right below here, don't be like Johnny. Don't make the same mistake. It's simple, okay? Challenge number five. Challenge number five. Pass the exams. That's another challenge that you're going to have throughout your process, your application process. And um, nobody better than Dr. Ryan to teach you how to pass in a National Dental Board exam. You got this content for free. Patron and Mental Dental, huge, 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 huge for you. I wish there was this back in my day. You know, I, w I, I didn't, I think the Patron, there might be a small fee for it, but I just put, I think I put here as free. Uh, but it's, it's such a small investment that I'm going to consider this free because what you get out of this, it's, it's, it's worth every penny. And what you want, oopsie, sorry. What you want, this is what you want. Mm -hmm. This is what you want. This is me, 2013, back then, passed uh, uh, one and two uh, phases for the board. I passed both in my first attempt because let me tell you, if you go back to the live that Dr. Ryan and I did, he mentioned that if you don't pass on your first exam, it's going to show on your application. And you don't want that showing on your application, ideally. Ideally, you don't want that showing on your application. So that's what you want. And Dr. Ryan can help you with that better than I can. In fact, in my in my in my full Portuguese course, I refer people to the mental dental for the board. I don't have the content about the exams. I refer them to Dr. Ryan's YouTube channel. Uh, but that's what I need you to do. I need you to pass in the first exam, and we can help you with that. Okay. Uh, challenge number six. Challenge number six. It's a great great question that came right there. Uh, Johan. Johan asked, uh, "Is your course in English?" Johan. I'm coming up with a master class that's going to be in English. And I'm going to be announcing this master class fees and all that at the end of this live. Today, I'm going to be announcing that. It's going to be 100% in, in, in English, okay? My course that's already recorded, I have over 20 modules, over 25 hours of, of, of lecture. That's 100% in Portuguese, unfortunately. And that's why I'm here uh, joining Dr. Ryan on this uh, event to, 
what I'm switching everything into uh, English now. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody asked a question there. Passing the national board and exam will increase my chance of getting admitted to a specialty program. I would say yes. Passing the board never, never hurts anybody. Passing the boards never hurts anybody. Number six, the challenge number six, which is quite interesting because a lot of people think that the hardest part is the application. Let me tell you, the application is just a start because the interview is a big, 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 big moment. Interview is a big moment. You want to be prepared because all that hard work to get letter of recommendation, personal statements, pay all these fees, uh, pass the exams, fill out the, the, the application, all that kind of stuff. If you don't prepare yourself for the interview, that's it. Having a great application is not enough, guys. You have to ace the interview, okay? American culture is very, very different than other cultures, okay? American culture is very different than other cultures. You have to learn. Let me tell you a real-life Leo here, myself, example, real-life example, okay? Look how I got like, <laughs> I got in trouble twice doing something stupid because I just didn't know any better. Okay. <laughs> when, <laughs> Dr. Ryan's going to laugh at me because he was in Chapel Hill back then. When uh -uh. did you graduate again? From, from dental school or residency? Dental. 2019 dental. dental school. 19 dental school? Mm -hmm. So I was in Chapel Hill 2009 and 10. And uh, I got this position doing research with uh, Dr. Lucia Sevidanis. She's now in Michigan. She's she's great. Lucia. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so in Brazil, as a Brazilian that I am, I was 22 years old back then. A very young guy. Not 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 the sharpest tool around. Not very bright back back then. Not very much life experience. In Brazil, you're dressed really really nice with a pair of jeans and a nice button-up shirt. The problem is that Abercrombie and Fitch is really cool in Brazil. It's really cool. Everybody wears it. It's really, really nice. Dr. Ryan, <laughs> is Abercrombie and Fitch really cool here? If, I think, you're, not, if you're not 14 years old. I know. I think, it, yeah, I was going to say, I think at one point it probably was. Um, and I don't, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I would say it's probably not very cool. For, for, for not, a grown man, for a grown right man. Let, let, me, let me rephrase you for a grown man. Like Abercrombie and Fit, you see a lot of people yeah. wearing the, their stuff. It's I love it. I absolutely love it. I have a ton of their outfit. I used to come here to the U.S., go to the store, spin a I, I worked at Abercrombie and Fitch. I did. Oh, did you really? I, I did. I did work for two weeks. I made $6.15 an hour, and then I, I quit. But I got some good deals because I got a special employee discount. But I loved Abercrombie and Fitch. I loved it. And that's cool in Brazil. That's really, really cool. But it's a brand that's used by most, a lot of teenagers here, not, not adults. Usually you don't see adults wearing Abercrombie and Fitch. I thought it was cool. So I got my button up Abercrombie and Fitch shirt with my pair of jeans. And I thought that I was amazing walking like that through the dental school. Did I impress anybody? Certainly not, because that's not the culture here. And I used to walk around and see these people in walking in their khaki pants and nobody wears khaki pants in Brazil. And I would be like, what are these people doing this? They're in such such like a, a, a formal environment in dental school, walking in khaki pants. It's because I didn't know any better. I thought that jeans and button-up Abercrombie shirts were really cool and khaki pants were not. But I was completely wrong. It's because I didn't understand the culture. It took me a little while. So they 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 taught me about stuff. Uh, the Dr. Sevi done is and some other people are like, hey, you gotta you know you gotta, you gotta dress up a little bit better, buddy. So I switched my clothes, you know. And then I remember that they sent me to VCU to do a intro to shadow for a couple of days. And then I I, I bought a suit. You you know Dr. Oliveira, uh, Dr. Ryan, Dr. Oliveira. Uh, yeah yeah absolutely. He took me to H and M. He and his wife, Gracie, Dr. Grace, they, they took me to H&M <laughs> and they bought me a suit. Uh, uh, I bought amazing. a suit. They were like, hey, Leo, this is what you got to wear here, buddy. So I bought a suit for myself at H&M. Then I went to VCU to visit them, you know. But the interesting thing is that now I have this American mentality that if I go to an interview, I have to wear a suit and all that. So I go to Brazil. I go back to Brazil. I go to my orthodontic residency interview. 
how do I dress up, Dr. Ryan? I just mm. spent a whole year in the United States. They just brainwashed me and how do I dressed up for my interview in Brazil? Mm-hmm. I put a suit on. No, Abercrombie, huh? No, there were 40 people interviewing. I was the only one with a suit on. I was the <laughs> only one. And every all the, after I got accepted and all that, the, the, all the professors basically mocked me because I was the only one wearing a suit. My point is you have to understand the culture and you don't know what you don't know. Okay, you have to understand the culture. And I have I talk about 30 tips about how you can do well in your interview, because people just don't know the differences between U.S. and other countries. And you you are moving to this country. You have to go with what they do. You cannot do like me and show up on your jeans pants for an inter for uh, for an event, important event. You can't. That doesn't work, guys. People are going to look at you like it, 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 it doesn't work. So we can help you with that. And I still have my wardrobe with a lot of Abercrombie and Fitch shirts and stuff like that. I just don't go to work with them. I just go to other places. <laughs> yeah. um, so multiple people get multiple interview offers, but they also get rejected. So just because you get an offer doesn't mean that you're going to get in. Okay. So I put this thing in red. I put this thing in red. Because this is important. If you get your application rejected, that's one thing. Now, if your application got accepted to an interview and you got rejected at the interview, that's a whole different ballgame. It's a whole different ballgame because they gave you the opportunity. They had you there. They interviewed you and you probably didn't impress them. Your door at that particular school not going to say that's 100% closed, but your chances are much, much, much smaller. I would say that if you apply and you get rejected and you apply again, your chances are much higher to, to have a chance to, to, to go in than if you apply, get an interview, and get rejected in the interview. And I'm saying mm-hmm. get rejected. I'm, I'm not saying get waitlisted because those are different things. You can get accepted. Yeah. You can get waitlisted. You can get rejected. If you get rejected, and I know people who got rejected in their interview. I know. If you get rejected at the interview, that door probably is mostly closed. Okay. So don't work so hard just to fail at the last step. Be careful about that. Okay. And this is Dr. Stephanie. Dr. Stephanie, she joined my course. She is really, really sweet. She's a dentist from Brazil. And now she's a DMD candidate at University of Alabama. I said that six people applied this cycle in my course. She is one of them. She got accepted. And I have a little message. See if you guys can hear this. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear this or not. It doesn't have a volume here. Let me let me um, see here if this. It's not it's not I'm, I'm not going to stop here too because uh, i'm afraid of the whole thing losing the connection but basically she's telling a little story about how how she applied she she got a few interview uh offers but she didn't get accepted into any school then she did a consultation with me and then we worked on her uh personal statement and uh her application overall some things about her capit application that we we saw some 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 issues and she applied again and uh, she got accepted. She got accepted at UAB. She got a few other offers. And then she just didn't go for interviews because she was already accepted. And uh, she's going to be moving to um, Birmingham, Alabama to start her school. I think it's coming up in January. So uh, she's uh, one out of the four people that so far that got accepted that was in my course. She's really, really sweet. And I'm super, super happy for her. Challenge number seven. Challenge number seven is I don't have time. Let me tell you. You got kids like I do. You got work to do. You got a lot of stuff. You got a patience to see. You got so much stuff to do. And on top of that, you basically have to sign up for another full-time job, which is applying to become a dentist in the United States. Okay? That's a lot. That's really, really a lot. I understand that. And I'm with you. It's really, really hard. So... You got to hear what uh, Dr. Marcella did. She uh, is another one that got accepted 
uh, she got accepted into Tufts. She's also part of my course. She's one of the four that got accepted this 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 um, this season. And uh, she also did a consultation with me. Then she signed up for my course. And then um, we basically she she's a mom. She's a mom. She has, I think, two kids. She was working as a dental assistant. She took a bunch of exams, passed a bunch of stuff. She got a job as a limited license in Massachusetts. So she was basically working as a dentist. Okay. On top of that, she was part of Hispanic Association of Dental Association, I believe. Um, they have a fantastic group, group of Tufts. She volunteered to do a ton of stuff, participated in events, wrote papers. Let me tell you, she did everything. She could. And she has two kids, and she has a husband, and she works full time. It's really, really, really hard to have time to do all that. But if she can get somebody to guide her at the right path and say, you got to do X, Y, and Z, she's going to be extremely efficient. And that's what I was able to help her out. Okay. That I was basically just guiding her in the right direction a hundred percent of the of the the, the 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 success i like to say that belongs to her because without her commitment and her hard work she would never have gotten this position you know she worked really really hard and just with a little bit of guidance she was as efficient as she could be and she got accepted into her dream school, which was Tufts. She was already doing some work there. She lived in Massachusetts. She had limited license. She still has a limited license there. And that's another successful story. And that's Dr. Marcella's life. It's most of our lives here. We have full-time jobs. We have bills to pay. We have offices that we have to take care of. We have employees that we have to take care of. We have employees calling out, calling out sick. We have all that happening. We have kids, and on top of that, we have to apply to dental school, which is a full-time job. It's mm -hmm. hard, guys. I get it. Yeah. I get it. And I'm going to teach you guys. This is a business comp concept. It's not my theory. I learned from other people. I'm just sharing this with you guys. I'm going to tell you the power of saying no. The power of saying no is extremely mm -hmm. important to help people to be successful. If you have two tasks to do, if you have two tasks to do and you say yes to the first task, you basically said no to the second one because time is limited. Once you say you're going to help your friend doing something else, you cannot go with your wife for dinner. Once mm -hmm. you say you're going to be um, working until 9 p.m., you're going to have to say no to put your kids to bed. That's basically what happens. You say no, yes to one thing. You automatically say no to other things. Some things you don't even realize that you said no to, but you did. You just don't know about it because the opportunity never even came to you because you already have a commitment. You're not even exploring other possibilities. So what I'm going to tell you is this. If you say yes to spend a ton of time doing research on your own about how to get your degree. If you want to say yes to go to the library and, and, and get the biochemistry books to, to study for the boards instead of, instead of going to, to the mental dental channel, you are automatically saying no to take care of your kids. You're saying no to make money. You're saying no to work on your application. Okay? Yeah. Invest your most valuable resource in the best possible way. What's your most valuable resource? I hope you guys know this answer. It is time. It is time. That's your most valuable resource. Keep in mind, guys, for me to come all the way from Brazil and end up in the United States and go to my graduation day, May 2017, that did not happen overnight. For me to graduate in Brazil here in 2009, that's when I graduated in Brazil in 2009. I only became a dentist in the United States in 2017 because there was no information around. Everything on my own. Hard work. Months. And I'm saying hard work, just researching for stuff. 
The reason why I know so much about how to get your dental degree in the United States is because I was broke when I finished my dental school. I didn't have money and I didn't have a way to get a loan. Back then, I did not know how to get a loan. So I, I, I read whatever you can imagine about free schools that I could attend. And back then, I, was, I wanted to be an orthodontist. Back then in 2009, there were four. I was able to pinpoint four orthodontic programs in the U.S. that would accept me for free. Sorry, would not accept me. Four dental programs, uh, orthodontic programs that would be free. Tennessee, University of Tennessee, Mayo Clinic, MedStar Memorial Hospital in Washington, and VCU, Virginia Commonwealth University. Out of these four programs, later I realized that two of them would not accept foreign trained dentists. Mayo Clinic and uh, Tennessee would not accept foreign trained dentists. I spent two months to find out that there were only two programs that I could get accepted in the United States. Only if there was somebody to be like, in mm. two minutes, be like, hey, don't even waste your time, buddy. You can't make this happen. Okay. Because after I even find out that, 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 that I could go to Memorial Hospital and VCU, I later realized, learned, I went to VCU for dental, that VCU back then was the most competitive program in the whole country because they were a two-year program and they were free and they provide you a stipend and they have very good faculty. So they were the most competitive. So I wasted a ton of my time because I didn't know any better. There was no information and I had to do it on my own. But mm -hmm. that allowed me to be here today sharing my knowledge with you guys because I spent a ton of time reading this. And I don't want you guys to spend a, time, a ton of time reading this. Okay. That is me, 18 years old. Working in Connecticut, Foxwoods Resort Casino, I was a valet assistant. I wasn't even cool enough to be a valet. I couldn't drive the cars. I would just <laughs> tell them where to park. I would, here, here, go a little bit more. Get closer to this car. Cold, as cold as it could be. Yeah, I look at that. Four months learning English. My point in sharing this with you guys is that today that's me in my own office with two books where I published a chapter in all three of them from international authors in my own office. The, 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 the way that I have to go from making $7.80 an hour, I think, as a valet assistant to having my own office in the United States, two offices, it was a long way. It was a hard work. So I want to show you guys that nothing is going to happen overnight. And the more good quality information you can get for your future, the best. So how can we help? I'm coming up with this first masterclass ever. First of all, it's the first masterclass ever. Because even in my course, the lectures are recorded. And when I do live events, it's not, it's not like the whole thing. This is 100% in English. And this is live and interactive, which means you can ask me questions. And there are a limited number of spots available, which means it's going to be a small group so we can spend a lot of time together. Okay? We can help each other. You're going to learn methodology to start your planning process. How are you going to learn? Like You're going to learn how to plan your pathway. You're going to learn that. You're going to learn the different entities and the importance to the application. I talked about a few of them. That's extremely complicated. I actually finished this lecture this morning uh, during my lunchtime about these different entities. There's just so much stuff to go over that I promise you in a 40 minutes lecture, you're going to save three to six months of Google research. I guarantee you that. You're going to learn how to become a strong candidate. I get this question a lot. Hey, Leo, how can I do this? How can I do that? Should I do this? Should I do that? Is this going to help? Is this not going to help? I'll teach you everything that's going to help you. Okay, I promise. I'm going to point out the personal statement key points that people don't want to miss. I review a lot of personal statements. Um, I change a lot of personal statements. My personal statement when I apply was not the greatest one. And I was able to learn from it. Uh, and, and, and throughout this over 10 years doing this, I got a pretty good feeling about things that should be in and out of a personal statement. And 
a few of these stories that you guys saw today of these folks, I worked with them on their personal statements. We switched their personal statements. I have a great lecture about key points for personal statements. Let me tell you something else. As a foreign trained dentist myself and you guys, many, many of your faculty, they don't know what to write in a letter of recommendation. They don't. If Dr. Ryan goes to one of his faculty right now and he says, can you please write me a letter of recommendation? They're going to say, yes, sure. Let me, let me take care of that for you. Because culturally, this happens every time in the United States. So they know how to do it. If you go and ask for your professor somewhere else, they might say, what? What is that for? <laughs> what, 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 what do you need that for? Never heard of that before. What am I going to put in here? Well, I'll, 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 I'll give you the lecture. I can give you the key points where, where you can share with your faculty, your professor, what needs to be in this letter of recommendation. That's important. You know, most foreign trained uh, professors or, or folks, they don't know anything about this. This is a different culture. Because I think, Dr. Ryan, correct if I'm wrong here, but I think you started getting letters of recommendation in high school, right? High school for college, college for dental, dental for grad, right? Yeah, I think it depends. A lot of colleges now are asking for that. Mm -hmm. A lot of colleges are asking. So this is culturally the, 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 the rule of thumb in the United States. But when you go to a different country like Brazil or somewhere else, it probably is probably not a rule of thumb. So that people don't know what to do. They don't know how to help you. You're going to help have to help them to help you. So I teach you like, hey, you got to talk to your professor about these things. You're going to understand a little bit better about the expenses and the loans. You're going to learn that. You're going to learn the logistics to apply for DDS, DMD or grad programs because they're two different pathways, different things that you have to do, different exams. All that kind of stuff is different. It gets complicated. So I'll help you with that. I'll help you with key mistakes that people makes, uh, makes in the submission of the documents. Okay, I'll help you with that as well. And uh, I'll help you how to ace an interview, which is very, very important. You don't want to get to the last step and fail there. That will be very, very like a big waste of time. And of course... Questions and answers. Like I said, it's going to be live and interactive. You're going to be able to ask me questions. How long do I expect this to be? I expect this to take about four to six hours. It depends on how many questions. Okay, it depends how many questions. So just to give you guys a comparison, my course in Portuguese today, my course, my full course in Portuguese, if somebody wants to be like, hey, Leo, I want to get in, into your course. Somebody signed up two weeks ago. I want to get into your course. They're paying $1,250. $1,250. $1,250. That's how much people pay in my course. Okay. This masterclass, this masterclass, it's going to be $297. Only $297. But it's only for 15 spots. Okay. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit why is this so affordable. Some people are like, oh, this must be a catch. I'll explain to you in a, in a second why is this so affordable. There are only 15 spots. Okay, only 15 spots. And if you want to sign up right now, you can go to my website, dentalacademyusa.com. Right there, you can go to my website and you can sign up. Keep in mind, there are only 15 spots available. And I already have people that signed up before because some people signed up for our list. You know, I sent a list out with people that emailed me and they had a list. Uh, and I already have people to sign up. So we have 15 spots available uh, and, and just so you guys see how serious I am with, with my courses and all that, uh, my company dental Academy USA is, uh, has been approved by the Academy of general dentistry PACE program program for, uh, approval for continued education. And I received this certificate, uh, of approval on, uh, July 1st of this year. And I have two years of approval. Um, and that's, that, that's how much effort I have put into this process to help the, the, the folks that are foreign trained in to, to get accepted into the United States. Um, you can look for my name up on the AGD website, American General, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Academy uh, General Dentistry website. You're going to find, look for uh, approved institutions. You're going to find Dental Academy USA there. You're going to find there. You can go to our website and you can uh, sign up for our course. $297, 15 spots available. Once the 15 spots are taken, I don't want to see people saying, oh, sorry, my car didn't work. Uh, my uh, dog ate my wallet. Uh, any kind of excuse, I'm going to be like, I'm sorry. 
It's going to happen on, on October 22nd, 15 spots available. People that are from my course, they will have uh, access because they already, they already invested 1250 so they're going to have free access to this masterclass. So there will be more than 15 people there. Um, so there will be more than 50 people. 50, oh, oh, hold on a second. I, I got people here already signed up, Dr. Ryan. Give me a second here. Yeah, people already signing up. So spots are being taken. So just so people don't say that I'm coming up with stuff. Can you see right here, PayPal confirmation? The time, is it showing? Oh, yeah. Right there. So people already signed up. So uh, not 15 spots anymore, let me tell you. Not 15 <laughs> spots anymore. <laughs> so there will be more than 15 people because the folks from my course, they already invested 1250 you know. Uh, but uh, you're going to have the chance to have this masterclass for only 297 that uh, it, it's a very small investment. So I know that some of you guys will have questions. I know that some of you guys will have questions. And let me ask you this. Oh, I got somebody else to sign up. Dr. Ryan, before I sign up, Dr. Ryan, uh, we, may have uh -oh. to, we may have to finish a little You're bit. Running out. <laughs> Hold on. That's good. Keep Hold signing on. up. I got, I got my cell phone right here. Somebody else signed up again. Uh, that's great. That's great. Questions that people are going to have. I already know the question. I've, guys, I've been doing this for three years officially with my course. I've been doing for six years helping others, and I have been doing this, this for 10 years uh, myself. Okay? Uh, or actually, 2003, 14, 14 years myself, since 2009. Okay? So I know plenty of the questions that you guys are going to have. First question is, can I ask questions during the course? Absolutely. You can ask questions during the course. It's it's live and interactive. That's one of the greatest adventures of this live masterclasses that you're going to ask right there for me. I'm not going to be able to do a full consultation about your whole life, you know, but yes, yes, I'm, you're going to be able to watch the course. Can I watch with my spouse? A lot of Brazilian folks are married to dentists. I don't know the rest of the world, but in Brazil, I'll tell you, dentists marry each other. You can watch with your spouse as long as you guys are together. If you're in different computers, that's not going to work. Okay, so as long as you guys are together, yes, not allowed to bring 10 friends to watch the course together. Okay, that's not gonna work, either, okay, guys, you gotta be mindful of that. But uh, if you're your spouse, want to watch, sure. Another question Am I too old to go through the process? The vast majority of people in my course they are over 40. Okay, the vast majority are over 40. Uh, oh, she asked the question too. That's yeah, so, I wanted yeah, to ask. So how do I know these things? How do I know? I've been doing this for a hot minute, right? So, yes, so basically, uh, the vast majority of people in my course are over uh, 40. We have people that are in dental school, we have some folks over 50. There are people that I've met that graduated from school over 50. The oldest person that I've done a consultation for, he's 67. He doesn't look 67. He doesn't act like 67, but age he's 67. So I'm going to tell you, no, you're not too old to go through the process. Um, how long will the course be? Four to six hours. I uh, estimate that to be four to six hours, depending on how many questions you guys have. You know, of course, I'm not going to be able to stay there forever. But I'm imagining that the content itself, it's going to be between four to five, just what I have to talk to you guys. Just my content. I, I have quite a few lectures that I already uh, finished the translation to English. Some of them are quite long. Um, so I expect four to six hours of, of uh, masterclass. You have to be there with us. You know, you have to hang out with us. There will be breaks. Why is this course such a low investment? I'm sure people are like, oh, that's, uh, you know what, that, um, I don't, I think, Leo, there's a catch there. It's only, it's only 297, man. It's just, there, there gotta be a catch. No, there's no catch. Why there is not a catch in this thing? Why am I doing this such, such a low investment? Because this is my first time doing this in English. Okay. I've done plenty of events for an hour, two hours, an hour and a half. This is going to be four to six hours on Zoom. So it's going to be a different uh system that i'm using uh, quite a few things are different so it's the first time that i'm doing this so i don't want to charge a lot of money when i'm trying this uh, this 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 course uh in my first time at the same time i'm also only allowing 50 people 
You know, why is that? Because I'm not going to do this huge thing here for 100 people. Just do the math with me. If every single, if I put 100 people in, because I'm sure there's 100 people that would sign up for this, like if, if you know, if it falls in the day that they're available and all that. But let's just do a quick math here. I like quick maths. 100 people sign up for the course. Okay. Each person asks one question, just one. Each question back and forth goes for three minutes. 100 people times three minutes. 300 minutes. I spent six hours of my Sunday just answering questions. Am I going to put 100 people there for 297? No. No. That they're, they're probably going to have to pay my full price, uh, 1250 to for me to spend a whole Sunday answering questions, you know? So that's why it's such a low investment this first time only for the first 15 people to sign up. OK, so I said there's no catch and there's no catch. Th th this is the reason why. This is the reason why I'm doing uh, this with such a low investment. OK, Leo, I'm not convinced yet. Tell me why I should take the course. If you're not convinced yet, just don't do it. Just get your two hundred ninety seven dollars and, 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 and go do something else. You know, like if you're not convinced yet, I'm not going to be able to convince you. So there's nothing that I can do if you. Watch these things, and if you're feeling uh, not sure that I trust this guy, this and that, that's fine. Just just don't do it because um, my goal is to have successful people. Okay, I want to get 15 people in this course, and within the next four years, some people will apply next year. I'm sure some people are still going to be in the process, and some people are still going to take a little bit longer. But I want in the next four years, out of these 15 people, 15 get accepted into the school. If somebody comes and, oh, I don't know about this, I don't know about that, what you're going to do, these are usually the, the, the people that are not going to make it happen. These are pe the people that are, don't work hard, they're not committed. And if I have to convince you to do that, I'm just not interested. I want to have successful people in my course, people that are committed, people that know what they want. And if you don't want this, that's totally fine. I totally respect. But I also don't want to have to be convincing people. If you're happy, great. If you're not... Free content available on my YouTube channel. You can go to my YouTube channel, learn stuff for free. Okay. Um, these are my offices. These are my office, my two offices. This one to the left is the one that I am right now. Actually, my wife works out of this office. This one in the right is the one where I work out of this office. And um, like I said, it didn't happen overnight. A lot of time, a lot of commitment, a lot of studying, and I'm here to help you guys to put your name, to put your name. I see there, Dr. Yasmin. Don't know what's your specialty, but what is uh, Yasmin Periodontics, Yasmin Orthodontics. I want you to put your name in that wall. I want Dr. Mora, Vanessa right there. I want Dr. Gustavo Saj. I want Dr. Johan. I want to see your name in a wall like that that's what i want to see i want to see you having your dream coming true being a dentist in the united states uh davi is this a one day session yes it is a one day session i forgot to mention it's in my website but i forgot to mention it's october 22nd it's a sunday october 22nd at 10 a.m eastern time because i have a lot of folks from california that follow me a lot of folks from california so 7 a.m. in California, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, 11 p.m. Brazil uh, Capital Time. So it works for everybody. There will be a lunch break. You're going to be able to take a lunch, bathroom break, and all that. Yes, it is a one-day event. Thank you, guys, everybody. Uh, Dr. Yasmin said it's a bargain. Yes, it's an absolute bargain. <laughs> I, would, I would agree with that. Absolutely agree with that. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I appreciate your time being here today. How many people joined us today, Dr. Ryan? Didn't even see that. I think that was a lot of people asking questions yeah. and all that. Yeah, I mean, we still have in the 60s watching, but I nice. had certainly hundreds of people stopping in tonight. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Vanessa asked the question there. Uh, being very young could be a disadvantage. Um let me tell you, being very young could be a disadvantage. Being middle-aged could be a disadvantage. And being very old could be a disadvantage. And being very young could be an advantage. Being middle-aged could be an advantage. And being old could be an advantage. It really depends how you set up your application 
to stand yourself apart. Okay. The problem that people see in being really young is that they don't have experience. The problem of people that uh, have been working for a long time is that they have too much experience. They might not want to change their ways. So it really depends on how you portray yourself in your application. And mm -hmm. this is one of the things that you learn in the course for sure. You know, um, April 3.30 a.m. here. First question is, can I get a student? 3.30 a.m. Can I get a student loan as a foreign dental student with no green card and without a cosign? Yeah, buddy. I learned I learned one one uh, expression here in the southern United States that I like to use a lot. It, it's kind of it says like that. They ain't gonna fly, buddy. They ain't gonna fly. <laughs> That's gonna be hard out there. It is it is possible, but I'm a hundred percent transparent. It's gonna be very hard. There are options out there. It is extremely hard in this situation for you to get a loan, Doctor Ryan. Just really quick here. Let me give one second here. I got one, two three, four, five, two other people signed up. I have seven people that are already signed up. So we have only eight spots available. Okay. Wow, Just so you know, that was eight fast. spots available. Yeah. My, oh my phone gosh. is my phone is beeping here. My phone is beeping. Uh, so you had from from announcing the master class till now you had seven sign up? Yes. Wow, yes. that's awesome. Yes. Oh, you guys better be fast. They're not going to be <laughs> there much yeah. longer. And, and 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 people might be like, oh, he's he he's just making that up. I mean, it's right here. My no, I, be, I believe you. Can, you can see the <laughs> time. The can, they, they're just there right now. Boom, boom, boom. It's just boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we got. Uh, yeah, you guys are going to get a lot out of that. That's for sure. Yeah, quite a few people that are coming up here. Yes. So we have uh, good what, questions here, Leo. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Oh, how long is the class? How many hours a day? It's 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 a one one day Sunday the twenty second. Four to six. I am estimating four to six hours, but you know what? If it goes to seven hours, I'm gonna stick around. I'm gonna stick around. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make sure when you guys get out of this, you guys are like, wow, wow. I'm gonna tell all my friends about this thing here, because that was really, really amazing. Or maybe you're gonna say, I'm not gonna tell any of my friends because I don't want them to know all this information. <laughs> <laughs> one, one or the other one or the one other or the yeah it's gonna happen you know that's true <laughs> you don't want to see your options how do i sign up dr ryan can you put my dental academy usa uh, a link i don't know if i am not able absolutely to the chat yeah. there it's Already on my on website it. dental academy usa you go there you can uh, you can sign up you can sign up directly through uh paypal uh, two hundred ninety-seven dollars investment dental academy usa it's uh 15 spots available October 22nd. I think if if there are no more questions coming up, I think uh, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Dr. Ryan, have any questions for me or anything? No. I mean, my only comment to, to say here is that um, if you guys have been watching the podcast that I've been working on with Colgate, I interviewed uh, Dr. Luis Pimenta. Uh, that episode went up two days ago, and he is actually the guy responsible for establishing the advanced standing program at the university of North Carolina. So he, he's the guy who made that happen. Um, and I learned from him firsthand how competitive that program is. Uh, they only accept four doctors per year and many, many more than that apply. So um, when Dr. Leo is giving you this offer of a one day kind of everything included about your application, a one day course, uh, I would be all over that because there are a lot of people who um, are competitive applicants. Uh, there's a lot of people I've met over the last few months doing mock interviews who are very, very impressive people. Um, and so you want to be able to stand out from the crowd. And this is a really, really good way to do that. Thank you, Doctor. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, that's that's a uh, it's a unique opportunity. I would say I'm not sure it's gonna happen again because it carving time out of the schedule. That's why I'm doing it on a Sunday because people from all, all over the world want to watch it. So I cannot do it on a Monday evening. I cannot do you know. I work during the, the week, so turn out Sunday on Saturday. I gotta uh, coach the kids on soccer. It doesn't work either. Uh, <laughs> But guys, That's time you, consuming. It's time consuming. Thank you, everybody, so very much. Um, 
if you have questions uh there's my 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 instagram i think it's down below my youtube channel you can ask questions there uh my website mm -hmm. where you can sign up for the course 297 and i hope to see 15 of you guys on october 22nd 10 a.m eastern time awesome Thank you, everybody, for joining. It was a lot of fun, and I hope you took something away from it. Link is in the description for Dr. Leo's channel. Link in the chat to sign up for the course. Only eight spots left now. Let me let me let me double check Maybe before it's... I say. Let me see yeah. if somebody else took. Let me refresh my email here. Yeah, looks like it's eight spots left still. All right, it's refreshing right. here. There yeah. you go. Eight spots left. Perfect. Let's see who's gonna sign up. <laughs> Thank Sounds you, Dr. Ryan. All right. Well, thanks again for joining everyone and have a great rest of your day or good night, depending on what time it is for you. And we'll see you in the next live stream. Bye, everybody.